All right, so this guy was the first class C, pretty much a champ. Um, runs continuous wave real nice. This is the higher voltage one I was going to work on. Basically, same premise, but this is going to have a, a GDT. The only difference is this one's got a uh, background oscillator, a little triple five timer as a background oscillator. I get sidetracked. Before I moved to that one, I wanted to go ahead and... Uh, make another little class C guy but use PLL feedback instead of a triple five background oscillator the PLL pretty much serves that purpose hex converter feedback as usual that goes to the PLL and that goes to the gate driver I've made so many of these now I just make them pretty much by memory now it's real easy it doesn't take a lot of time so another thing I wanted to, I was just curious about is what is the max frequency I could get out of one of these uh, UCC gate driver. So that's a UCC 27322 gate driver. And I just randomly wound this coil. I was hoping it would be 3-4 megahertz. Um, it's 26 gauge. It ended up being about 2.6 megahertz. A little lower than I was hoping, but it's a lot higher than normal. So most of these you usually see ran this type of setup. You know, not much higher than 1 megahertz. About the limit these of these gate drivers. Depending on, you know, the how hard they have to switch, type of uh, MOSFETs they're switching, all that type of load that's on them. Uh, but typically you don't, you know, you see a different type of circuit being used that uses a higher speed gate driver or some other type of gate driver uh, circuit. Again, pretty much normal setup. And right now, that's the MOSFET gate. This is an IRFP260. I originally had a uh, 740 on there. 740 worked all right. The 740 switched a little faster, but that's not too bad for about 2.67 uh, megahertz or something like that. So, just got a random one nanofarad capacitor on there right now. And now I had just randomly put that on to sort of snub some of the voltage. Um, that thing gets real hot, so I haven't really tuned it yet. I just wanted to show how it runs uh, with this arrangement. So, if I cut that on, and the way I've got this tuned right now, that's what it's looking like. There's a few different ways to tune this, seems like, so far. But right now, it's pulling about 60 watts. So I've got it pulling a little bit of power. It's a little bit of power. And as per usual, the way it's dialed in, um, it's getting out of tune as I get close to it. But let's say I cut the power up. see so the drain looks like it's about over 200 damn near at this point that's what it starts looking like so the drain goes off the scale pulling about 180 well, let me crank it up some more 200 watts let's pull So that's about 75 watts it pulls it down to. So again, I'd have to tune it back slightly. Tune it back slightly. It gets a little better in tune. As I draw arcs and stuff. So to free air when I tune it a little better, that's what it looks like. So I mean, that's not too terribly bad. Got a lot of ringing going on. Um, right down the gate. And... So yeah, it's about 2.6 megahertz. About to cut the lights down or something. But yeah, that runs not too bad. That uh, the uh, 260s doesn't get hot at all doing that. Got the lights back off. So cut it back up. So again, um. I'm actually shooting over 200 volts on the drain at this point, but apparently the 260s is, is dealing with it. So that's about 45 volts, four and a half in. It, you know, <laughs> it's pretty damn similar tuning to the uh, other one I just made. So that almost looks like a four megahertz flame. That's pretty cool. Looks it looks about three megahertz. Is pretty ideal that's what I was looking for so 
that's pretty cool and I'm thinking I could tune that a good deal better um, but again that little shunt capacitor is probably blazing hot blazing hot so I showed that tuning um, that tuning had very little heat generated I was very surprised at the lack of heat generated I could run that for so long uh, but there's another type of tuning if I tune that back I eventually dial in so let me go back to where I was so that's where I was and if I keep going down I eventually get what looks like the same type of switching right power draw goes down very low don't get any output uh, but that's when I can draw some output out right that's just kind of cool um, so unloaded loaded unloaded loaded pulls it up like amp and a half tops doing that same voltage as before I get roughly what looks about the same drain voltage right of course holds very little power no output um, probably still light you know, still light stuff up, but there's no, it's got a decent field, right? It lights up really damn bright, right? But that's because I have to drop the frequency into the PLL operating region to get it going good. But again, that's kind of cool because you can pull little high, high frequency arcs. That's about 60 watts right there that it's pulling. And it seems to be switching, you know, decent for what it is. Alright, so I'll go like that, see what happens. That's sort of the benefit of what you can do with the PLL sometimes. So if I want that to just be like that, the free air, um, then I can tune it that way. Of course, I can also tune it to like it is right now. Hardly pulling any power. Still putting out a field, but I don't get the uh, real good phase angle till I bam. Well, real, it's more like the frequency. It's not perfectly resonant. So boom. All right. So again, I can just crank that back up like that. The PLL. Is. It goes into certain regions, different hard switching and whatnot. Yeah, that right there. It's a pretty good little deal. So again, I sort of have to back it down a little bit to account for the loading in order for me to get it better in tune loading it so yeah again not bad you know I've seen worse gate drives at much lower uh, frequency than that it leaves something to be desired there's some things you could improve on it um, but yeah, I actually wouldn't have expected to be able to drive a nice little flame like that. So that'd be interesting to maybe try to audio modulate uh, with the PLL. I haven't quite done that yet. So 200 watt run, 26 gauge coil. Man, it gets pretty damn warm. Heat sink. Heat sink has barely any warmth on it. 
whatsoever. Um, the UCC gate drivers, or the, the single gate driver here, is a little warm. Not in the danger zone. It's not too hot. Uh, logic pull is pretty low. So, yeah, pretty cool. Now, if I change my center frequency knob, see, this is my window. It's pretty much all the way up right now. Goes down to about 2.3. I believe that can go up to like four or five megahertz. So you could probably run a four megahertz coil easily the same way I'm doing here by just rewinding that to be four megahertz.